Um, what we're going to be te te you know, teaching on is an uh, end time sequence of events today. I, I feel like because there's so much that you're seeing going on in the world, and I sense that I, I need to discuss that because with everything that's going on in the world, people can get into fear, can get into uh, uh, you know, uh, anxiety because of every, everything that, that's going on. And as Christians, we need to know what's going on and we have to have right knowledge about what's going on. There's a lot of things that are being taught out there. And um, look, there's many teachings in this area of end times prophecies. There's many people that look at it in many different ways and so forth. And what I share, you may not like it, you may not, whatever, but I believe with, since 1982, since I've been saved, as far as what I've learned and what I've seen, um, uh, you know, this is what I see from Scripture about what's going to happen and so forth, so on. But again, um, and then we're going to go through the Olivet Discourse, Matthew 24. We won't cover every detail, but I want to show you and lay, because there's so much confusion in chapter 24. So much confusion, and it's led to a lot of weird teachings. And a lot of different, you know, uh, 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 and so forth, so on. Well, Pastor, do you believe the Lord will, will take us away before the tribulation and so forth, so on? I do. I do believe that. There's a lot that don't. Some believe you're going to mid-trip. Some believe you're, you're going to be raptured at the end and then come back. I and mean, it's like, well, that's, why go up if you're going to come back down? <laughs> I'm like, why go up if you're going to go back down? So there's a lot of stuff over, over there. Uh, uh, so I felt that I need to lay this down because we're, we're beginning to see teachings again coming up that, uh, that are causing some confusion and so forth. But end time sequence of events. I'm going to lay real simple the order of how things are going to happen and then we're going to go to Matthew 24 and get into to show you I'm going to kind of guide you through Matthew 24 and show you where that sequence how things fit in there and so forth again you might say why is this important because you're going to get people asking you when things begin to happen like it's happening you're going to get people asking you why is this happening and you need to know how to answer them correctly and and so forth so on and not blame God for the hurricane Right? Uh, now, judgment is coming. Judgment is coming when the age of grace runs out. When the age of grace runs out, uh, uh, it's a different time. So, for those, for, I'm going to say something. For those of you that say, well, I'll get saved after, you know, if this really happens, when the tribulation happens, whatever, then I'll get saved. You will get saved. You can. But you're, most likely, you will probably die for your faith. And you will be held accountable if you deny the Lord. Because, right. again, Daniel prophesied that there'd be 490 years that God would deal with the children of Israel. 490 years. 480 of three of them have already been dealt with. Amen. There's still seven left, which is called the time of Jacob's trouble. And God is going to deal with what? The children of Israel again to get them ready for the physical return of Jesus. That's all the tribulation is. It's, tribulation is for two reasons. To get the, the Jews ready for the physical return of Christ. And judgment on, on the world for not accepting the message of His love and grace. Now, here's a sequence of, event, of events. Now, here, I mean, I, I do believe there's going to be a few more wars that are going to happen. Something's going to happen in Syria that, that I believe either Damascus is going to be no more. Something's going to happen there, either in Damascus, and you know, uh, just Isaiah 17 and so forth. There's some things that I think that are going to happen that, uh, but the first one, th these are the ones I think you really need to know. The first thing that's going to happen, and you might say, what, when I say this, is the rapture. The rapture of the church. I don't believe. Some people say, well, there's still. Well, there's, yeah, but the gospel has to be preached in all the world. Well, wait a minute. That's what you've heard from preachers today. I, I don't believe that's true either. Oh, pastor. Jesus said until the gospel. Well, I know he said that. But let's read it where he said that and why he said that. And watch. See, because people think until we get the gospel all the way everywhere, then Jesus will come. 
but you're you're reading it if you if you read it with that in mind you're you, you're not getting it so that's why we're gonna look at it so the first thing what's the you know what the next thing is coming the rapture now these first two there can be a little bit of confusion but the rapture would be the first one then World War three is be the next one or Ezekiel 38 and 39 where I, we, most scholars, most theologians believe uh, there's a coming, some, some can argue whether it's Russia, whatever. I do believe Iran, I do believe Iran, Russia, and, and Syria, whoever, all these will be involved in trying to attack Israel. But Ezekiel 38 and 39, World War III, Hilton Sutton used to preach on it so much, I remember on World War III, and for many, many, many years. But but uh, Ezekiel 30, 39, so when Russia and uh, armies and so forth and Iran come and try to annihilate Israel, that's when God shows up and he protects Israel. And it says in Ezekiel 38, 39, it says specifically why he's doing it. He says, my glory will be seen in all the nations. Amen. And Israel will know that I'm their God. Amen. Israel will know that I'm their God. And so, and so God, in other words, people, what's going to happen is what? You're going to begin to see what, what you read in Egypt, the mighty things God did in Egypt to whatever. The world's going to begin to start seeing those type of things again. Amen. Amen. Why? Because we're at the time of the end. Right. Amen. Now, so the, so the rapture is number one. But here's the thing. I don't know if the World War III is going to happen first then the rapture or the rapture will happen first then the, but to me it makes more sense that the rapture would happen first why because America's out of the way yeah. with all the Christians that are gone from America it's so much easier for Russia China or you know I I Iran to go and attack Israel because we're out of the way do you think right now that Russia would, would try to mess with trying to attack Israel right now with America here no, no. Because they know we, we can countermatch them even though we'll end up killing each other as far as nuclear weapons. So Russia wouldn't, just makes no, but with Christians gone, with most of the uh, uh, Christians gone, then what would happen? It's, it's a piece of cake. Let's go. Let's go invade Israel now. And then that's when God shows up. He fights for Israel. And, and it says it is a nuclear. Remember that lady with the 1968 prophecy from Norway? that I, I have it on my YouTube channel. That's what the Lord told her. This is in 1968. And, and she said the Lord showed her that the rapture would happen first and then World War III. And like again, it makes sense to me because, again, America is not in the picture there. So that, you know, these allies can do whatever they want. Now, but either way, the sequence is either going to be the rapture, World War III, and then Daniel's 70th week will begin, which is the seven-year uh, period. A seven-year period of God's dealing with the Jews. That's Daniel 9. If you want scriptures, the rapture, 1 Corinthians 15, 50, 57. World War II, Ezekiel 38, 39. And then Daniel 70th week is Daniel 9, 24 through 27. Father, I ask for utterance, Father. Help me to get this out and to not to bring confusion, to explain it plainly and simply, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. After that is the Great Tribulation which is the last three and a half years of the seven year period. That's Matthew 24, 15 through 22. That's when Jesus said the, uh, the, the Antichrist will go into the temple and, and uh, say that, you know, he proclaim himself to be God. Now, that's the Great Tribulation. After that, though, at the end of the, uh, of the seven years, that's when Jesus physically comes. That's the second coming of Christ. Matthew 24, 29 through 31. And then after the second coming of Christ will be what? The thousand year millennium. Amen. Where Jesus rules and reigns. Amen. For a thousand years. As King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And then after that is what? Eternity. That's Revelation 21. Where God makes a new heavens and a new earth. So real quick. The sequence of events is rapture. World War III. Now this could switch. It doesn't matter. But it's going to be in that time frame. Daniel's, uh, and you might say, Pastor, why do you think that he's, why do you think that, that, that Ezekiel 38, 39 is going to be in the beginning of the tribulation, whatever? Because there's one scripture in there that says they're going to be picking up bones for seven years. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's a clue. Yep. 
it says that they went up for seven years picking up the bones from the war. Why would it just say seven years? Because that's the tribulation period. That's Ezekiel 38, 39. Look at it yourself. There's a, God gives clues. And there's a clue in there. For seven years, they have people in suits that go pick up. From a nuclear war, you'd have to wear a suit so you don't get the, you know, that and so forth. So, so for seven years. So God puts clues in there and, and so forth. And then, and then again, the great tribulation, that's at the middle of the seven years, three and a half years. The second coming of Christ, that's at the end of the seven years. The thousand year millennium and eternity. Now, let's go to Matthew 24. Because here's what I really want to get to. Now, if you've never heard it like this, I pray that you stay with an open heart. Because I've opened my heart to hear what others are saying. And I have to go with what God is showing me. Amen? I'm not, I'm not afraid to hear their side. But, I, I'm, you, gotta, you know, I'm saying you've got to hear it all. Now, here's Matthew 24. Let's start reading verse 1. Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. So notice, they're at the temple and they're telling, man, look, Jesus, isn't this awesome? And Jesus, knowing that one day, what? That temple is going to be thrown down, which happened in AD 70. He says, hey, not one. See this? Not one stone will be upon another. It is going to be thrown down. And look at verse 3. Now, as they sat on the Mount of Olives, that's what we call it, the Olivet Discourse. As he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, notice, they asked three questions, but the, really the second and the third could be combined as one. Here it says, here's the first question. Tell us, when will these things be? What things be? About the, about the temple being torn down. About, you know, that. That's the first question they asked. When will these things be? Notice the next question. And what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Notice, what will be what? The sign of your coming. Notice, the sign of your coming. They're talking about him physically coming back. Not a spiritual coming. In fact, to be honest with you, Jesus has come many times. Amen. Okay? Amen. So when we're talking, Jesus has come many times. He came and spoke to Abraham. He came in the form of Melchizedek. He came as the angel of the Lord that won the victory and so forth. He, he's come many times. So, so you see what I'm saying? Anybody can argue that. He, Jesus has come many times. But we're, not, but we're talking about when he physically came the first time, that's when he was born as a baby. When he actually, fit, and that, he came to the whole world. And when he comes back the second time, we're talking about when he physically appears to the whole world. Not talking about all the other times Jesus came. See, you can get confused because some will argue, yeah, but he's come many times. But we're talking about his physical where he said he would come again on the Mount of Olives. Now, and so, and so, uh, uh, let, so they're asking that question, right? And so look at verse 4. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come, to, will come in my name, saying I am the Christ. Now listen, he really didn't answer their first question yet. He's just saying a couple of things. And here's, have you ever wondered why there's four Gospels? Because it's like having four reporters. You can have four reporters on the scene, and one will report one angle of the story. How many know you go to the other side, and one report, and they, like right now in the hurricane, one's in over there in Orlando, one's in Miami, and, and hey, well over here it's not that bad. Over here it's bad, you know. It, it depends how you look at it. And so, I believe when, when Matthew wrote this, he wasn't concerned about answering his first question. How do you know that? Because you know what? It's really not answered. Then where's the answer to his first question? Go to Luke, chapter 21. And Luke is the doctor. He's the more detailed guy. And so Luke actually gives the answer to the first question about when will these things be, about every, uh, when the temple is going to be torn down. Now check this out. Go to Luke chapter uh, 21, verse 7. Look at this. Let's start reading verse 7. So they asked him, saying, Teacher, but when will these things be? And what sign will there be 
will there be when these things are about to take place? And he said, now he says the same thing, right? He kind of brings this, for, take heed that you not be deceived for many will come in my name saying I am he and the time is not drawn near therefore don't go after them but when you hear of wars commotions he says don't be terrified for these things must come to pass first but the end will not come immediately then he said to them nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there will be great earthquakes in various places and famines and pestilences and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven here look at here now he's going to answer verse the first question. Here's the answer to the first question. When will these things be that the stones are going to be thrown, the temple's going to be destroyed? Verse 12. But before all these things, see, before these things about what? Earthquakes and all that. Do you see that? So right there he's saying, before you see all this other stuff in the world, the earthquakes and all that stuff, before these things, they will lay hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to, uh, to the synagogues and prisons. You will be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake, but it will turn out for you as an occasion for testimony. Therefore settle it in your hearts not to meditate beforehand on what you'll answer. Verse 15, For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which your adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but a hair, not a hair of your head shall be lost. By your patience, possess your souls. But look at verse 20. Here it is. Here's the full answer. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by what? Armies. Armies. Then know that its desolation is near. Listen. That happened in what? Right before AD 70. That's what happened. Titus came and, and surrounded Jerusalem with its armies. But then his father Vaspian said he needed some help. So he stopped the siege for, I forgot if it was a few weeks or whatever, he stopped the siege to go help uh, his father. And that's when there, any Jews that were inside the, the, inside the Jerusalem left, just as Jesus had told them to flee. And, and, and saying, uh, uh, what's his name? Josephus recorded that all the Christians left Jerusalem. And then, as far as you know, not one of them died. Because they heeded the words of Jesus right here, that he says, look at what he says. Verse 21, let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let those who are in the midst of her depart, and let not those who are in the country enter her. For these are the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe to those who are pregnant, and to those who are nursing babies in those days. For there will be great distress in the land, and wrath upon these people. Upon this people, who? The Jews. Wrath at what? Why? They rejected the Messiah. Look at next verse. Verse 24, and they will fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive. Listen, that's what happened. After 87 and Jerusalem was destroyed, the Jews got scattered throughout the whole world. Yeah. Amen. Listen, and, and, and they will fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive into all nations. That's exactly what happened in history. Listen, and Jerusalem will be trampled by who? the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are what? There it is. There's the gap. There's the time. There's the church age right there. Amen? And, 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 uh, and, and you, might, you see what? So there's a time break between, notice that after the Jerusalem is destroyed, they're going to go throughout the whole world. All nations. Until, and, and Jerusalem will be trampled by the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles is fulfilled. See, God knew this age we live in is the age of grace. The Gentiles, we're, we're in the Gentile age of grace right now. And until that's finished, until that's finished, that's, Jesus won't come back. Now, here's the thing though. So, in fact, if you keep reading the next verse, uh, the next verse, uh, um, and there will be signs in the sun. Listen, when are you going to see the signs in the sun and the moon and whatever? It wasn't until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Here's why I'm saying this. There's, there's preaching that's going on today that's saying that Jesus has already returned. He returned in AD 70. I am sorry, these scriptures show uh, that, can't, that just can't. And it's bringing confusion to the body of Christ. I'm hearing it in gray circles too. It's confusion. No! 
There's too much scripture. This right here tells you until the time of the Gentiles, that church age fulfilled, he ain't going to come back. Then you're going to see the signs. But some of the, the some of them, they're, they're known as preterists. Preterists believe that, you know, it's already happened. Jesus already came in AD 70. Really? I says, if he did, we're living in the resurrected life. Really? Then why am I still, there's people that are still sick. Because when we get to where we get to, there's going to be no pain, no sorrow, no whatever. And if Jesus already came, why do we take communion? He said, do it until I come again. Amen. And, and even Paul said, there's, there's two guys that are preaching that the resurrection has already passed. And is messing up the faith of some. So you're going to start hearing talk like this. Oh, Jesus already came. Why? Because it's been... People feel it's been delayed. He hasn't come back yet. So now the talk is, yeah, then, you know, he already came back in AD 70. And so you're going to start hearing this in these last days. And I'm already hearing it and I'm, I can't believe it. But I'm showing you from Scripture and I want to tell you why I'm, I believe, you know, the, 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 you know the, the way this order that we believe it. So notice, he explains it. In fact, go to Romans 11.25. Paul says the same thing. In Romans 11, what is this time of the Gentiles fulfilled? It's the church age. It's the age of grace that we're living in. Amen? Now listen, I've been, don't think that I just barely started on this stuff. I've, since 82, I, I've been uh, learning about Bible prophecy. So I'm not a youngin in this area. Okay? I've read many books, many different authors, I've, you know, and all that. So I'm not new in this. Amen? But I feel I need to address it because it's, we're going to that time. And, 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 but by the end, you're going to see why it's important to share this. Notice, Paul says, For I do not desire, brother, that you should be ignorant of this mystery. See, that's the mystery. The Jews didn't know about the church age. It was a mystery. The rapture was also, Paul says, I show you a mystery. Paul revealed it, God revealed it to Paul. Why? Because God's going to rapture his church out. Listen, that you should not be ignorant of those mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion. Listen, blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of what? There it is again. So Paul is matching up to what Jesus said. Until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. God's waiting for all the fullness of the Gentiles to come in and then blindness will be no more then the God's going to open the eyes of the Jews they're going to desire to, we need to build a temple we need to finish we, we, that's, you see what happens so when the church is raptured and out and the tribulation starts and, and where were three happened and God saved Israel they're going to say there is a God God has a plan for us let's build a temple that's no wonder they're going to want to build a temple. So within those three and a half years with our technology today, is it easy to build a temple in three and a half years? Easy. They could do it in a year. Yeah. Amen? So what, you see what I'm saying? You, you see how it could easily happen that when we're out of here, and then, and then uh, uh, we're raptured, right? We're, we're out of here. And the Jews have just been saved from a tremendous victory. They were about to be annihilated and God saved them. They're going to know there is a God. We need to... Start serving them. Listen, the clock starts again. The seven year, the last seven year starts. Time of Jacob's trouble starts. It's God's dealings with the Jew. And notice, because when he comes back, notice this is at the end of the seven years. It says, they're going to look at him whom they pierced. And they're going to weep and cry. It was Jesus all along. See, they're still trying to do the old covenant in those seven years by having the temple, the sacrifices. They're still trying to operate under the old covenant. And then when they see them, they're going to weep that he's the Messiah. They're going to mourn and weep. And so, and so do you see that? Once it's over, see, this is the church age of grace we are living in now. Once it's over, the rapture of the church will occur. And Daniel's 70th week, which is the seven years of God preparing Israel for the physical coming of King Jesus will begin. Now let's go back to Matthew. Now Matthew starts answering question number two and three in Matthew chapter so so notice let's start reading in verse four and Jesus answered and said to them take heed that no one deceive you for many will come in my name saying I am the Christ and will deceive many do you see if you just read Matthew 24 by itself and you don't get Luke's account then you're gonna say oh you see all those things happened back then 
And then Jesus says, when you see the abomination, that, that, that must be referring to Jerusalem time, 80, 70. You see how you can get confused? But that's why you compare scripture with scripture, line upon line, and so forth. Luke straightens us out. He says, before that happens. So here shows you now, he's generally talking a time frame. And he says, listen, for many will come to my, in my name saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be what? Famines, pestilences, earthquakes in various places. All these things are the beginning of what? Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name. See, but he's generalizing. He didn't do the details that Luke did. And then, and then many will be offended and betray one another, will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. Here's that verse that is used so much. See, Pastor? Jesus won't come until this, until the verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Yes, he did say that there. But here's the issue, though. If it, it, the order is, is Matthew 4, verse 4 through 14, is a general description. You know what it is? It's a description of what's going to happen in that seven-year period. Oh, pastor, really? You think so? Check it out. Verse, three, verse 4 and 5 sound a lot like Revelation 6. If you read that order, it's actually part of the six seals. Because the first, what? There's going to be famines. There's going to be pestilence. There's going to be wars. You know, the, the horsemen, the dead, you know, the pale horse and whatever. If you read, if you compare, and listen, if you think I'm the only one that thinks this, Charles Capps even taught that. The Lord showed him that Revelation, that, that Matthew 24 from there on is actually Revelation 6 and on. It matches, it matches, these are, in other words, he, he's basically explaining the seals that John got later. Amen. And, and, and it make, when you look at it, it starts making even more sense because if you go through it, so, so verse 4 through 14 is a general outline of the whole. But then, look at verse, in fact, let me read one more thing though. Um, so, here's my point. Everything from verse 4 and on happens what? Tribulation. So, that means, if, if you really believe, I'm not the only one that believes this. If you, if you believe that it, uh, from verse 4 and on, it's tribulation, then that means it has nothing to do with the church. The church has been raptured. Oh, <gasps> no, things really change. Now, I got to lay the groundwork. I can't give it to you yet because we got to move forward. Look at this. So it's important to understand that everything that happens from verse 4 and here in Matthew is what will happen in the seven-year period. So when you're reading where it says the gospel will be, will be preached in the whole world, preachers are saying that's before the rapture. But it's not. Pastor, can you prove it? I can. I can prove it. Go to Revelation 14. Go to Revelation 14, verse 6 and 7. This is right in the middle of the tribulation period. Do you think God's going to trust men to get the gospel to the whole world? Yeah. yeah, but pastor, he did. He told him to go into a... I know he did. But do you think God doesn't have plan B in case men mess up and don't get the gospel to the whole world? He knew. Listen. This is the... Gra now, here's where grace comes in. God knew. So in Revelation chapter 40, I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven. This is in the middle of the tribulation period. Having the what? What did that angel have? Everlasting. Come on now. Everlasting. The everlasting. Put, put, put that scripture. Can you move it up? You got it up there? Look at that. The everlasting gospel. To preach. God is sending angels to preach the gospel. Listen. To preach to those who dwell where? Listen, to every nation, tribe, tongue. That means everybody. Everybody in the tribulation is going to hear the everlasting gospel if God has to send an angel to tell them. Mm. 
So there's grace. There's the grace of God in the middle of the tribulation. That God is going to actually send an angel to preach the everlasting gospel. And then not too long, then Jesus comes back. So the gospel will be preached throughout the whole world and then the end will come. But it ain't just going to be by man. God is even sending an angel to go and do that work and make sure that everybody has a chance to hear the gospel before Jesus returns. Ooh, that's exciting. See, some of you have never heard this, but it's in there. It's in the scripture. I knew it didn't match with me. You mean God's going to trust man to get the gospel out to everybody? When we have failed them in everywhere else? God's going to entrust us to get it? How about these people that, that, that are so hidden we can't even find? Yeah. Is, those that ask the question, God's not fair. Is he going to send somebody to hell that's never heard the gospel? There's so many. And the evangelists, oh, you better get out there. Because you don't, you, people are going to go to hell because you're not preaching. And I understand where they're coming from. That's their gifting. That's their burden. Listen, it doesn't depend on you. Yes, do, we are to do our part and serve. But let me, at the end, God will get, come on. Listen, I, some of you are looking at me like, like you can't believe what I'm sharing. But yet the verse is right smack in your face. Go back to that verse, verse 6 and 7. Go back to that. I saw another angel find, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. Next verse. Saying, notice what they're saying along with the gospel with a loud voice. Fear God. Give glory to Him. For the hour of His judgment has come. And worship Him who made the heaven, the earth, the sea. So they're, they're even telling Him, listen, it's about to go down. Yeah. Judgment is coming. You know, worship God. Give your life to God. Amen. The angel is saying, preaching to the people of earth. It's sad to say that some of them will still even see an angel telling them the gospel will still reject his grace. Why? Because they've hardened their hearts so much. They rejected it all throughout their life and, 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 and they're praying for the rocks to fall on them instead of repenting and saying, Jesus, I believe you are who you are. I mean, they're seeing signs and wonders right in front of them. An angel preaching the gospel to them and they, some of them will still not believe. Amen. Amen. So am I saying that we shouldn't preach? The, of course, not, please don't misunderstand. I'm not saying that. We need to go preach the gospel. Why? There's people that are going to die before this happens. So they need to hear the gospel. So you see what I'm saying? Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm just saying you can't use that verse to put the pressure on us, on man, that we're going to really get the job done and then Jesus will come. No, he is going to come when time is up. And, 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 and I believe, and most of early Christians, you can see in their writings, believe that God would have man rule for 6,000 years. Well, guess what? There's, there's different thoughts here. Something were at the year 5777. Other Jews, though, and they have a website, they think we're, uh, we're already at the 6,000. So who's right? I don't know. We don't know. So if that's correct, that means we would have 25 years. I don't want to set dates, right? We don't have 23 years to go. And we're not, we don't, I'm not saying that to set dates because I'm, I'm not a date. But what I'm telling you, Jesus didn't, and in fact, Jesus didn't say either that you wouldn't know the year. He just said you wouldn't know the day or the hour. That's all he said. And to who did he say that? Here's the other question. Who did Jesus tell that they wouldn't know the day or the hour? It wasn't to us. It was to the tribulation saints. Because, let's keep reading. Look at this. I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish this today. So, so do you see, notice what happens. Let's keep reading. Verse 15 now. So, so we see then that God is using an angel, what? To preach the gospel before he comes, right? He's using an angel to do that. Now, verse 15 to 28. I'm showing you how this progresses. What is 15 to 28 about then? It says it in your notes right there, even in your Bible. My says the Great Tribulation, right? So here's the, in the middle of the three and a half years, look what's going to happen. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. 
Let them who is in the housetops not go down to take anything out of his house, and let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days, and pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath, for, for then there will be great tribulation, such as not ha has been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. Now listen, verse 21 tells you, again, the preterists will say, see, that's talking about Jerusalem. Well, not when it says what it says here. Something like this hasn't happened ever and never will be. So if, if the tribulation they're talking about is 80, 70, listen, there's more that have, there was 1.2 million Jews that died in 80, 70. Well, the Holocaust was worse. Yeah. What, 6, 7 million Jews? So it had to be, so, so this can't refer to that time. Amen? Now you'll, you'll notice in the Bible it always repeats itself. History repeats itself. Something, yeah, there was Epiphanes, that guy who, who set up a, a, an idol in the temple. And that's what started the War of the Maccabees. And they revolted. But that wasn't the fulfillment of this. There's a future where this Antichrist will go in to the temple. He's the one that's going to work a deal with Israel to, say, to start the seven-year agreement where they can go ahead and build their temple. But in the middle of, that, of those three and a half years, he's going to go in and proclaim he's God. Now, let's keep reading. And he says, verse 22, Unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be what? Shortened. Then if anyone says to you, look here... Here is the Christ, or there, do not believe. See, so how could it be referring to 8070? He's talking about where the Christ is. Amen? Now listen, he says, Do not believe it, verse 24, For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. That means we can be deceived, is what he's saying. He says, listen, So see, I have told you before, and therefore if they say to you, Look, he is in the desert, do not go out. Or look, he is in the inner rooms, and I believe it. Listen, back in the 80s when I got saved, I saw in the Phoenix newspaper, a guy had pulled out a, an ad, and it says, uh, this Messiah, whatever, he has been hiding in the desert. <laughs> so this stuff has already happened, or stuff like that. He's hiding, in the, you can, you know, he, and he's about to be revealed. So stuff like that's happened for, you know, all kinds of stuff like that has happened. And... <laughs> He says, do not go out and look. He is in the inner rooms and I believe it. Why? He's saying, when Jesus physically comes, you're going to know it. Right. <laughs> he said, For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be for wherever the carcass... See, and, and the preterists will say, well, that's, that's, that's just... Uh, that's spiritually meaning that like lightning west, he's there, but he's not really there. See, what I don't understand about the preterist thought is... You're saying that Jesus showed up. Well, well, if he did, how come the millennium hasn't started? But they'll say, it has. It's in us. No, 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 man. We're not in the millennium. A scorpion already still bit me, so I know we're not in no millennium. <laughs> See, there's confusion. It can cause confusion. And, and notice, here's the proof. Notice, Bible throws, throws clues. Bible prophecy, you've got to look for the clues. Here's the clue. Listen. And there were the coming of the Santa Mambe. Look at verse 28. For wherever the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered together. That's a clue. Spirit of God puts a clue. Wherever the carcass is, and, and, and I'm going to say, well, there was a lot of people dead there, so you know, birds came and ate them and whatever. No! Go to, go to uh, Revelation 19. Look at Revelation 19. Here's when Jesus comes back, riding on a horse, right? Amen? Where's my... I lost my... Uh, Oh, there it is. I can't see it. Now I saw heaven open, and behold, a what? A white horse. And he who, on, who sat on him was called what? Faithful and true, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except who? Himself. Listen, he was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called what? So who is that? That's Jesus. Jesus comes back, right? But listen, he goes and gets the Antichrist, defeats them with the edge of, of you know, with the word of his mouth. But look at down, go down to verse uh, 21. Verse 21. And the rest were killed with the what? Sword which proceeded from his mouth, from the mouth of him who sat on the horses. Listen! And all the birds were filled with their what? There you go. 
Notice birds, carcasses, flesh. That's a clue. I believe Matthew put that, 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 Jesus put that clue. So when you read Revelation, you see there's the birds, there's the carcasses. So what's he referring to? That's the battle of Armageddon. When is that? That's at the end of the tribulation. Notice, and sat, and the birds were filled with their flesh. That's a clue. The Holy Spirit will put signs and clues to show you the time frame and where it's at. And, and, and so it's referring to that. Now, look at this. Go to verse 29. And here it is. Here's the second coming. So, he, so we went through the tribulation. Now we're at the second coming. Verse 29. Immediately after what? The tribulation of what? These, there's the seven years. It's at the end of the seven years that Jesus shows up. Amen? Now some that say, well, that he showed up at 87. No, he didn't. That wasn't a physical return. Well, it was a spiritual return. He, you, you can't... One of the main things about Bible interpretation is you take it literally. Unless, by the context and everything surrounded, there's no way you could. And that's where I think a lot of people mess up. Always, you should always take the word literally first, unless the context and everything you're reading is showing that it's, you know, it's, you can allegorize it. It's a symbolism. But notice, immediately after the trib, that's the, tri that's the great tribulation, those days, what's going to happen? The sun will be darkened. You know what the preacher is saying? Well, then, then Acts, when the Holy Spirit fell, the sun, Peter said, this is that. The sun is darkened or whatever. No, you can't use that scripture to prove that. That's just the beginning of the last days. We, this church age is the last days. You can't use to prove that because notice, Jesus said it himself here, the sun will be darkened and the moon. Well, so that can't refer to the baptism of the Holy Spirit that fell upon the earth. See what I'm saying? And so you see how people will use other scriptures and try, try to prove their point. And you can't do that. You can't do that. Listen, he says, And the moon will give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then, here it is. The, they ask, what's the sign? The sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven and then all the tribes of the earth will what? Mourn. What tribes? He's talking about the Jewish tribes. Will mourn. Why? Listen, who is he writing Matthew 24 to? Jews. That's the other thing you need to think about. He's writing to Jews. Yeah. And he says, all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see what? The Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. There you go. That's the sign. What's the sign? You will physically see it. That's the sign. So when somebody, well, how do you, what's going to be the sign? It's the physical return. You're just not going to see lightning. You're going to see him actually come and his feet will touch the Mount of Olives. Yeah. But guess what? I believe we're going to be coming with him. Because yeah. yeah. we're coming back. Yeah. Riding on horses. Yeah. I'll be like a rhinestone cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> riding down on a horse with my Lord Jesus on the front. <laughs> I have to lighten it up a little bit. It's a little serious here. <laughs> it is? <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to wrap. I'm, I know I'm running out of time, but I, I want to share this, though. Look at this. So, what's the last... Look at the verse there. Next verse. What does it say? Verse 31. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one in a So listen, if that happened, in, did that happen in AD 70? Couldn't have. When did, he, when did Jesus go and get, separate people and whatever, and whatever? Yeah, he separated the Jews, but that's not the, he's gathering them to get him, you know, to bring him to, you know what I'm saying, to the millennium and so forth. So that can't refer to that. Amen. Now, so we see that, right? And then notice what he does in verse 32, 35. Because here's, here's one that's used a lot. Now, learn the parable from this fig tree. When its branch has already become louder, tender, and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you... He's talking to these people, to these Jews, in that time during the tribulation period. He's not talking to the church. The church is already gone. When you see these things, 
know that it is near at the doors. Surely I say to you, this generation, he's, see, here's the one that's used, this generation. And that's why you should never set dates because people have gotten confused. Well, 1948 to 88, that's 40 years, and it didn't happen. Why? Because he wasn't talking to them. He was talking to this generation during the tribulation that would see this, that you're going to see it all. Once you start seeing this, the seven-year period start and everything, you're going to see it all. This generation will not pass. Hello? Now listen, he says, I know for some of you I'm throwing you stuff that is new. You've never heard it like this before. But it needs to be said. Because there's, a, there's going to be a lot of stuff that's going to come, start coming out. And it's going to deceive even the elect. And bring confusion. And so, and so listen, he says, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till the, all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. But of the day and the hour, no one knows. Yeah, no one knows the day or the hour. And the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So what is he saying? It's going to be the same. See, they didn't know until the flood. They didn't, they didn't know the day or the hour when the flood was going to come. Right? Until what? Until the flood came. Now Noah knew God said get in the ark. So that means the church should know. Listen. So that means if God instructed Noah get in the ark. Why? Flood's about to come. That means I believe before the rapture God is speaking to people's hearts. Believers. True believers. I'm coming very soon. Get ready. I'm coming very And that's what I believe is happening. God spoke to my heart in, in March of 20, 2014 and told me to start telling your people to get ready. I'm coming soon. That was his word to me. And I'm not the only one. There's a lot of pastors testify the same thing. God's been speaking to them to get your people ready because he's coming soon. Now, now notice, here's, here's, here's what's amazing though. No one knows the hour. Did you know you could count? There's three and a half years. There's 1,200, what is it? 1,260 days. So, it, but when the abomination, when the Antichrist goes into the temple and says, I'm God, you could count 1,260 days and that would be the end of the seven-year period. But the reason you're not going to know the day or the hour is because Daniel says, shows that there's going to be 1,000, it'll be 1,335 days will elapse between the start of the Great Tribulation and the Millennium. So there's a 75-day period between the time that the Tribulation ends and Jesus begins to reign in the millennium for a thousand years. So, there's a 75 day gap. We don't know between the time the tribulation ends when Jesus will come. So that's why no one in that tribulation period will still know the day nor the hour. Amen. Study it for yourself. Daniel chapter 9. It shows in Daniel chapter uh, uh, 12. Now, let me, let me, let me, can you hang on a few more minutes? Is this okay? Because I gotta, I gotta, I gotta show you why this is so important. I gotta show you why this is so important. That's why no one during the tribulation period will know the day or the hour. Now, notice, there's a guy named Jack Kelly. He's already gone to be with the Lord. He's, a, I, I've read many books on prophecy, but I believe he's one has one of the best. And here's what he said: Both the great flood and the great tribulation have three components. Listen, judgment, preservation through judgment. And escape from judgment. Did you notice that? Judgment, preservation from judgment, and escape from judgment. Now, in the days of Noah, what happened? The unbelievers were judged. Noah's family was what? Preserved through the judgment. Right? And Enoch escaped altogether. Enoch is a beautiful picture of the church. Why? He was, Enoch walked with God and he was boom no more God raptured Enoch took him away right before the flood oh, so listen at the end of age same thing is going to happen listen unbelievers are going to be what during the tribulation judged but listen just like God protected Noah which is a type of the Jews in the ark so will he protect the children of Israel during the tribulation period They'll be preserved through judgment. 
And the church escapes from judgment like Enoch. It's the same. God always repeats himself. Even, even when God was judging, was judging Egypt, what was he doing? He was preserving the children of Israel. The judgments would not fall on Israel. What did God do when, 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 when Sodom and Gomorrah was going to be judged? He takes out Lot before the judgment falls. Everywhere in Scripture, God will not, what? Judge the righteous with the wicked. For His wrath, the Bible says, is reserved for His enemies. Amen. See? See? So, that means... Let me get to, to, to what I'm going to get to. So, so because of that, that's why if you read here, notice if we keep re reading, where were we? Verse 38? Uh, verse 39? 40. 40. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. See, some have said, this is the rapture. No, no, no. It's not the rapture. It's not. If you're reading this in, in context, he said after the tribulation of these days, this is going to happen. So in context, this is the end of the tribulation where Jesus is separating people. Listen. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be at Starbucks and the other one will, <laughs> one will be taken and the other left. Watch therefore. But you, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore you also be what? Ready. What's the goal of all this that I'm trying to share? Be ready. Yes. He says why? For the Son of Man is coming in an hour you do not expect. Now, Here's what happens for the rest of chapter 24 and 25. You hear the parable of the faithful servant, the parable of the, the, the ten bridesmaids, and the parable of what? The talents. the talents. I'm guilty of this. And I am so sorry I have preached this to you. I'm guilty of preaching the parable of the talents to, to, Christian pe to church age people, and it's not referring to church age people. It's all these, all these, the servant, the faithful servant, we're not servants, we're sons now. Amen. The faithful servant is tribulation saints. The brides, the, the ones that, how many have, been, have gotten into fear? Hey man, if you don't get baptized in the Holy Spirit, whatever, the Lord might leave you and you might not go on the rapture because no. you don't have oil in you. No. People have been taught fear from these verses of the brides, whatever. That, this is why, this is what I'm sharing you is good news and comforting. So many have been taught fear from these verses. And then, uh, and then the talent one. Oh, oh, the talent one. Oh my God, I don't know if I use my thing. Notice that guy that didn't keep the talents? He was kicked out of darkness. That means he lost his salvation. If that's us, then we have our theology wrong. Come on now. Man, I'm preaching better than you're saying amen. It's the truth. <laughs> we got our theology wrong. If that guy got kicked out because he didn't do something for God, what happened to grace? Think about it. What happened to grace? Do you see why this is so important? If you don't understand Matthew this way, you're going to get into all kinds of stuff. And that's why you've heard so much preaching that's put burden on the individual that if you don't do this, God's gonna, gonna, you're not going to be saved because you're like that woman, the bridesmaid. You didn't have enough oil. You're the, no, no. Listen. Here's a warning though. For those of you that are delaying and not accepting Jesus during the church age, here's the problem. If you're a tribulation saint, you have more responsibility. It ain't the age of grace no more. It's oper Why? Because those seven years is finishing up the old covenant. Oh, there it is. See, this will set you free. Those seven years is actually the wrap up of the old covenant that did not wrap up. That the preterists say that has. No, it hasn't. That's why God is dealing with the Jews. And listen! You can't have two covenants operating at the same time. So God has to what? Kick out. He has to get the church out. So that, why? So that he can now deal with the Jews under the old covenant. Oh, have you thought about that? He has to kick. He got, he's got to get his church out so he can deal with the Jews under the old covenant to wrap up the seven years and the fizzle. In other words, God always keeps his promise and when he said uh, David I'm going to have a son from your seed that is going to sit on his throne here in the land and he's going to rule and reign and that's all that the Jews care about there, the reason many Jews don't believe in Jesus is because they haven't seen that promise yet well it's going to happen they're going to see him and they're going to mourn and weep oh my God my Messiah is finally here 
And then what will happen? And then God finally what? Finishes and fulfills that word to the Jews. There's your Messiah. You are not going to rule and reign. But see, that means God has a special heart for you, us, the church. Amen. God has a special place for us, the church. And what is that? Here it is. I'm going to end with this verse. John 14. So notice those verses that talk about separating the sheep and the goat. That's not talking about you. It's talking about tribulation saints and nations that were good to his brethren, he says. Who's his brethren? The Jews. Those that treated the Jews, God will show favor. See, it's, it's, not, it's not operating, tribulation is not operating under grace, people. It isn't. But look at what Jesus said in John chapter 14. Go ahead and put that. John. So this should bring comfort to your hearts. This is not a scary message. It should bring comfort. Why? God's going to pull us out. Bef yes, you're going to see some stuff. But before the worst comes, we will be out of here. Now, if you want to stay, if you believe, no, no, I, I believe we're going to go through the tribulation, go ahead. I'm taking the first train. You can go ahead and go. You can go ahead and stay. If you want to believe that, let it be to you. You're gonna, you're, you might get what you want. Amen? Let not your heart... Notice, why would Jesus say this? Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Next verse. My, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to what? I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, what? I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Can I give you one more, please? One more? One more? I'm going to show you. God shows a picture of this. Go to, just, just check this out. Go to Isaiah 26. Isaiah 26 has a picture of the rapture. How do you know that, Pastor? Look at this. Some people say it's not in there. It was hiding in there. Hiding in there. And then God reveals it to Paul. Isaiah 26, verse 19. Notice what he says. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you to myself. I'm going to take you away. It's like a husband going picking up his wife. Come on, honey. We're going to the honeymoon. That's what Jesus is saying. I'm going to go pick up my bride. Snatch her away. Take her through the threshold. Come on now. And bring her home. Listen. Isaiah 26, your dead shall live. Come on now. There's a day when what? Your dead shall live together with my dead body they show ooh, they're gonna arise they're gonna arise they're gonna wake and sing you who dwell in the dust that's the rapture for your dew is like the dew of herbs look at the next verse and the earth shall cast out the dead listen it's green here it is sounds like John 14 come my people enter your chambers <sighs> that's the rapture man and God's gonna take us into a special chamber while the tribulation is happening. Enter your chamber. Listen, shut your doors behind you. Hide yourself. Come on, people, look, look at that scripture. What does it say? Hide yourself, as it were, for a little moment. There's the seven years. Hide yourself for a little moment. Until what? There it is. Until the tribulation. In other words, the indignation is passed. Amen. Come on, people, that's a, that's a clue. Hide yourself until the indignation is past. <sighs> Next verse. For behold, the Lord comes out of his place to punish. Why? There it is again. Why is he hiding us? Because Jesus is, God's come into what? But judgment on the world for rejecting his son. The earth, listen, the Lord comes out to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their inequity. The earth will also disclose her blood and will be no and, and will no more cover her slain. Hello? Sounds like revelation. Sounds like tribulation. Sounds like judgment during the tribulation. People, can you see it? I know some of you are looking at me still like, man, you're crazy, Pastor. <coughs> because you've never heard it before. Doesn't mean it's not true. It's that you've heard so much religious teaching. Amen. Notice, it's a pretty plain scripture that shows. Amen. Let's pray. I got to end here. I shared this because we're living in the last days. 
and you're going to hear all kinds of stuff. Listen, Jesus has not come back yet. He's coming again soon. He is coming soon, but he hasn't. I'm going to tell you something. Paul even said, if anybody preaches a different gospel than what I preach, let him be accursed. We're living in days where things are going to be separated and so forth. Yeah, separation is happening. Father, thank you for your word. And I pray, Father, that you would give understanding. I know, I, I know there's some in here that they don't believe it. But that's okay, Father. I trust that you're going to reveal it to them. Amen. That you'll show them. That you'll guide them. And I thank you for what you're doing and all you're going to accomplish. And I just pray for anyone, sound my voice, if they don't know Jesus yet, hey, quit playing around. This is not the time to wait. Don't wait for the tribulation. Don't wait for the tribulation. It's not going to be as easy as you think. So if there's anybody here, you've never accepted Jesus, I want to lead you in a prayer. I want you to pray this. And I want you to say this. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I, believe word. I believe your word. I come, I come as, a as a sinner. But I believe that Jesus died I that Jesus for all my sins, all my sins. was buried, was buried. And, rose again and rose again on the third day. According to, the according to the scripture. Jesus, Jesus I, receive I receive your forgiveness. Be my Lord, be my, Lord. Be my, Savior. Be my Savior. Make me a new creation. Make me a new creation. And, from forward, and from this day forward, by your grace, by your grace I, will live for you. I will live for you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. amen. If you did that, amen, please let us know. We'll get some material out to you and so forth. Amen. God bless you guys. You are dismissed. We'll see you next week.